Here we see the Prime Minister of Australia. Often mistaken for one of the lower forms of reptile, believe it or not, he is actually responsible for leading the government of an entire country. Watch as the self-appointed Minister for Women reacts as a caller to a radio program he is appearing on reveals that she is both a grandmother and a sex worker. The sleazy wink. The creepy leering grin that would give an average sex offender pause. And most revealingly, the facial expression when his tiny lizard brain registers that it has been on camera the whole time. This, ladies and gentlemen, in more than one way, is the face of the Australian government. Lecherous, slimy, creepy, with a complete lack of empathy towards anyone suffering because of their policies. Yeah, so that's a thing that happened. The Prime Minister of Australia acting like a creepy, sleazy schoolboy when he's being interviewed on radio because he forgot there was a camera in the studio. Ha! Guess you're going to have to cut the ABC's budget even more so they can't afford those webcams in their radio stations. Now, as creepy and sleazy as that wink was, and if you're the sort of idiot who wants to argue that wasn't creepy or sleazy, I don't want to waste time even acknowledging that you exist. See, the wink, that was not what really bugs me, even when he went further. And honestly, the creepy grin and bleh, was way worse than the wink. But that's not what shits me about this. What shits me is all the lies that followed. His office leapt forward and said, oh no, he was responding to the host saying, it's okay to keep going with the call. That's what the wink meant, not like, Ugh, she said sex. Ugh. And it's just an entire intelligence insulting line for a number of reasons. First, it begs the question, if the wink was that signal, what signal was conveyed by the creepy licking of lips and <laughs> Second, why the deer in the headlights moment when he remembered he was on camera? If the wink was innocent, what did he have to be worried about? Third, are they seriously expecting us to believe that ahead of the interview, Abbott set up a signal with the announcer that said, hey, if there's a call that's a bit dodgy, I'll wink if it's okay to keep going with it. And the announcer said, yeah, you can dictate what happens on my radio show. For sure. It's just fucking stupid. I've said this before. Different opinions about politics are fine because people are different. But when a government is elected explicitly on a whole raft of lies, that goes way beyond political differences. And I'm sick of people equivocating and going, oh, all politicians lie. Yes, they do, but not to this level. I would challenge anyone in the world to find some tape of a politician telling Five incredibly significant lies in one breath, just before the election. Abbott said, oh, the, the Labour Party's running a scare campaign against us. But I'm telling you now, uh, there'll be no cuts to health, no cuts to education, no changes to pensions, no cuts to ABC, no cuts to SBS. Those were all lies. These people aren't driven by rational, objective politics. They're driven by raving ideology, lies, and revenge. Even before the election, this gang of thugs were publicly threatening people they declared to be their enemies. Horrible people like the heads of charities being told their funding would be cut off with the colourful phrase, we're going to cut your throat. That was just one example. This is not politics. This is not ideology. This is Thuggery, schoolyard bullies, privileged assholes who have no interest in what the majority of the country actually wants. And if you're one of the ever diminishing tiny number of people who still think Abbott is doing a good job and you can't work out why there's such hate towards him, this is why the fucker has earned it. And I work on an adult sex line to make ends meet.